Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to JP Barbecue. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Today we're gonna to be looking at these two smokers and seeing what they got to offer. You guys stay tuned. This is gonna be good. And of course, check it out. So if you're new to the channel, guys, do me a favor. Hit that little subscribe button right there. You know and click on that bell you know those i would really really appreciate it you know things like that really help the channel 30 inches high 36 inches wide 24 inches deep okay it's a lot of cooking surface in there when i bought this one when i bought this lone star grill it was the biggest smoker that they had in the in the market and the reason i went with this one versus maybe another one a little bit smaller uh for the amount of money that was the difference you know, for me, it was worthwhile to get the extra real estate. Uh, now, you may not want that. You may want something a little bit smaller to fit your needs. You know, they got different sizes when it comes to cabinet style smokers and even uh, what they call the traditional barrel type or, or cylindrical type uh, offset smokers. But 30 inches high, 36 wide, 24 inches deep got one cool touch handle to open it up you know you, that way you don't burn yourself one tell true temp probe uh, it's got two stacks up on the top for for the exhaust with a nice uh, opening uh, levers down low so you can open them up and it, and it comes I think I'm not 100% sure this is probably not standard everything I've said so far is standard uh, but I got two pro ports. I'm not 100% sure if one pro port comes standard uh, or if you know no, none of the pro ports come standard. You know, you, you, that's something you're gonna have to check out. But I have two of them. I do remember I paid uh, for the pro port, so I think one may come standard. But again, you know, don't quote me on it. You know, you're just gonna have to check yourself. But and I have it that way. I can put my temp probes in it. So. When it comes to uh, tell true temperature probes, tell true is pretty much the standard. You know, these are very high quality industrial grade temperature probe guys. You know, and uh, they're they're very. I don't know. When you say industrial, you know that should just you know pretty much explain how good these uh, gauges are. And I've actually had a digital temp probe on the inside right next to it alongside this one and they're very very close maybe maybe two three degrees difference the nice thing about this it's got a little allen key here on the side in case you need to uh, uh, adjust it to manually calibrate it you know you can do you can do that as well so that's the outside of it let's take a look at the at the inside Nice heavy duty door, industrial grade hinges. Uh, recommend that you keep them oiled up because the heat will tend to evaporate or dry out uh, the lubricant in it. So last thing you want is one of these bad boys to seize up on you and break off. Uh, same thing goes on the side with the, with the firebox. It's got industrial grade hinges on it as well. Keep those hinges lubricated little bit of olive oil just poured in there a little bit of spray um, uh, canola oil you know will, will do it some good and it, they'll last you forever uh, last thing you want is for the heat to build up those hinges seize up and then they break off you know you got to keep them lubricated uh, and make sure you read the instructions in the manual because you know they clearly stated inside so door nice big door also quarter inch steel it's got a, a drip guard here that way what it you know when when the moisture builds up and it drips down it'll drip back into the into the main chamber <clears throat> comes with four standard uh, grill grates and these grill grates are let me put my gloves on pull one out Uh, 32 inches by 24 and a half so you got you a lot of cooking uh, area here you can probably fit 
uh, one, two, three briskets on each one of these. Uh, as long as they're not, you know, real big briskets. But, you know, most briskets that I cook are about 15, 16 pounds. Uh, I guess after you trim it, you know, you trim all that fat off of it. So you probably lose a couple pounds there. So they end up being about maybe 13, 14 pounds, you know, once they go inside the smoker. But, yeah, plenty of cooking there. If you're doing... Uh, Picnic shoulders, Boston Buds, and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, I can probably fit three, six. I can probably fit nine on each one of these uh, comfortably without problems. So that's nine times four, 36 of them, you know, potentially that you can smoke in one shot. It's a lot of picnic shoulders. Uh, ribs, same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I can probably fit six to eight racks of ribs. Of the St. Louis style on each one of these, so you've got 32 to 36 racks of ribs that you can do, or a combination of uh, of uh, ribs and picnic shoulders. Okay, but yeah, a lot of cooking area inside. The other thing that it has is I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's got three hangers on the inside in case you want to be smoking some sausage or uh, smoking some meat that you're going to hang you can tell, take these grill grates out and just hang the meat and let it cook that way okay but that's what the main chamber uh, looks like so let's take a look inside the pit you know down inside the pit and see what it what it has inside um, this pit does have a deflector plate that they weld it up on the side that way when the heat comes up that it hits that deflector plate and then it, it comes back down into the bottom part of the pit uh, it also comes standard with three tuning plates and you'll notice that I have an extra tuning plate in mine uh, I went ahead and ordered an extra tuning plate just to see if it would make a difference uh, there's not that much of a difference you know to tell you right now uh, to get that extra tuning plate you know you can get it if you want that way you can play with it but you know uh, I got it just to uh, test it and see if it would make a difference but standard comes three tuning plates and the idea behind the tuning plates is as the heat is coming up from the firebox it hits that first deflector plate and then it comes back down and then the openings as you got the tuning plates spaced out the heat will come out you know through the tuning plates and you want to start off with a small little gap at first and as you're moving away from the the, the firebox you know just double the thickness of of that gap is what is what you want to do uh, the other thing that you can do that will help um, not control the temps but to give you very very uh stable temperatures all the way across and i'm gonna tell you i did a video on it just to see how well the temperatures would be all the way across if you fill the bottom chamber with water as that heat comes up and hits that deflector plate it'll it'll hover over the water and then it'll give you a nice even temperature all the way across you know going up so if you wanted to use this as a water smoker to keep precise temperatures you know you can now for the most part i don't use it as a water smoker i pretty much know um you know where where it's going to be hotter at here towards this side it's going to be a lot closer to what the gauge is telling you as you start coming over here towards this side the openings are bigger and the vents right there at the top you know there's going to be more heat over over on the i guess you can say the left side so knowing your smoker and how the temperatures are different you know from one end to the other you know is it, worthwhile knowing so it's, it'll be something that you're just going to have to play with the tuning plates do help a lot okay uh but what really helps is using it as a water smoker now depending on what you're smoking you know if you're going to be doing chicken uh, i don't recommend doing chicken and using this as a water smoker you know for chicken uh, you know for one that moisture will get into the skin of the chicken and just not give and, and it'll just be a soggy skin and you know i don't like that uh, i like my skin a little bit more crispier 
if I'm doing picnic shoulders, yeah, you know, I would probably use it as a water smoker. Uh, brisket, um, nah, I wouldn't use it for brisket. And uh, ribs, ribs I would probably use it. So the two things, you know, the only type of meat that I would use uh, as a water smoker would be pork. You know, because pork, you know, that extra moisture would add that flavor into the meat. The ribs would tend to be a little bit more tender as well, you know, adding that extra moisture. But do you have to run it as a water smoker? No, absolutely not. Just get your water bottle and put your favorite juice in it and spray your food down, okay? Uh, but that's what the inside of the, of the pit looks like. Again, it's got that first deflector, heat comes down, and then the tuning plates will distribute evenly the heat to come up into the, into the pit. So let's talk about the last few items on this uh, on this uh, offset smoker. It does come with a grease drain on it. Uh, it does not come with a grease drain uh, valve uh, that you would have to get, you know, if, if you wanted to get you a, a drain for it. Uh, I didn't buy one through Lone Star Grills. Uh, I got it without the the grease drain valve, and you know, I just bought me one at at. At Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that you know these these brass grease drains you know they're not cheap man this is a brass valve you know it'll run you 30 40 dollars and depending what size you get you know they can be pretty expensive I don't remember what I paid for mine but you know they, they are a, a pretty penny uh, if you decide to get you one uh, you don't need one because uh, you can always get one and you can get it locally where, wherever you're at uh, but you know I highly recommend getting you one either you know through Lone Star Grills or buy you one at the hardware store um, and and I designed mines where it's got a little angle to it so um, when I'm draining it you know, I just put a bucket down there and it catches all the grease so let's talk about the wheels uh, I got the standard wheels that come with it, and these are five inch um, wheels. The front two, I guess you'd call it the front, they swivel and the back two are, are fixed. Uh, so, you know, as long as you're on concrete, you know, it, it, you can move it around fairly easy. You can get an upgrade to, I think they have an eight inch wheel as well. And then you can also upgrade to the, um, what they call the competition uh, off-road package uh, if, if you want now uh, keep in mind that every time you do an upgrade to these things that that prolongs the time uh, for your smoker to get built so uh, if you do decide to get that off-road package there's gonna be maybe a six to eight eight week window that you're gonna add on to it but uh, I have the off-road package on my insulated vertical smoker and let me tell you what man I should have got that with this one highly recommend it whole lot easier to move around and if I need to move it up on the yard on the grass no problem it's got nice big uh, fat wheels that you can just move it anywhere you want with this with with the wheels that I currently have there's no way I can move it on the grass. It, the the weight of the smoker will just dig it in, and next thing you know, your you know your smoker is stuck in the yard. At least here in Florida, it would be. You know, we got that you know very soft sugar sand here. You know, so I wouldn't move this up on the grass uh, unless maybe I plank it or something like you know plywood or some or something like that. But uh, yeah, you know, standard those five inch wheels. Uh, you can upgrade to the 8 inch and you can upgrade to the, the off-road package, which, you know, I highly recommend that you do. Well, it all depends on what you want, you know, if, 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 if you want your smoker to get with those wheels, you know, get them, okay? If uh, you're not going to be moving it around that much, uh, maybe not. Uh, maybe you decide to do some competitions and you want to load it up on a trailer and you can take it around, you know, then get you the wheels. Uh, but again, you know, all that stuff is, is something that you have to take into consideration when you are customizing your, your smoker from Lone Star Grills. But that's pretty much it for, for my uh, offset 30x36. 30 again, I absolutely love this smoker. You know, it's, it's performed outstanding for me, performed very well. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the insulated vertical smoker now.
So that's it for this portion of the video, guys. Uh, if you're interested in watching the next one, it'll probably pop up right there in that corner or maybe over here in this corner, and it'll take you to the next uh, video part of this playlist. But before you go, guys, do me a favor. Uh, hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to visit my uh, jpbarbecue.com store. It's where I got your favorite barbecue products and sauces. You know, visit the website. You know, you see something there you like, you know, get you some. Uh, okay, but besides that, hope you guys enjoy the next video.